mic wasn't on there. What's up, everybody? Welcome to a Monday edition of The Squeeze. I am Tyler Connie. It's a new week, and it was a good, solid week back to the full-time videos after the vacation to the East Coast. We finished the week 10 and 7, up 2.62 units. It was a 2 and one day yesterday. We had the under between the Jays and the Cubs. Yeah, that didn't happen. The Jays offense finally got rolling. Not going to complain about that. 15 runs scored there, so that went over. In WNBA, we had the New York Liberty minus 10.5. They won by 11. So it's nice to be on the winning end of that. And then in the CFL, we had the Argos minus 10. They won by 13 points. We're up 10 units in the CFL. 10 units. The books just, they don't have the spreads right. And when you have a league with so few teams, it's similar to the WNBA. It's very top heavy, right? So good teams play bad teams quite often. So that was nice of 10 units in the CFL. Slower day today. It's just Major League Baseball. It's the only action. Obviously, there's soccer and stuff like that that I don't bet. So just two bets today. So I'm just going to quickly take a moment. A couple of, couple of little housekeeping things. The first one is the QR code here on the screen. Use the QR code or the first link in the description. Sign up for a new sports book. Make a minimum deposit or more. You're guaranteed the best exclusive offers and bonuses through my partnership with Betstamp and with those books directly. Number two, wouldn't mind you hitting the subscribe button down in the corner there. This is free. This is six days a week. It's about to ramp up. We're getting into football season. I have some fun, exciting new things planned. If you share it with a friend, that would be great. The more subscribers, the better, obviously. And that's the way that you can show appreciation is by using these links and by subscribing. Third thing is get in the Discord. The Discord is something I'm just learning about, but we're going to start ramping that up as well, which I am excited about. And of course, there's the social. So I know that Twitter logo is wrong now. It's X. I don't really care. We post um, stuff on TikTok. We post stuff on Instagram. So I'm trying to be in all places at once for to make it the easiest for you for how you want to get your bets. Obviously, this is the bread and butter. This is where I break down all the picks. But there's little fun things all over the place as well. And I wanted to ask you, for the people who do watch, what are some things you would like to see aside from the main three bets a day? You might say, you know what? I just care about the three bets. I follow on TikTok. It's 30 seconds. That's all I want. You might say, I watched a YouTube video. I listened to the breakdown on the bets. And then I either bet with you or against you, which is fine, by the way. Sometimes I get messages like, Oh, I really hope you win today. Yeah, of course I hope I win too. But if you want to take the information I give you and go against it, that's fine. I'm just doing the research to give to you. And the third thing, so I'm just wondering, like, what outside of the bets do you want to see? Things I've considered would be like a Sunday morning live show with other people. That might be something fun where we talk about sports betting world, about sports in general. Sunday morning for an hour, before, you know, before the NFL countdown and all that stuff. That might be something fun. I've toyed around once again with live uh, going on, I guess it would be YouTube. I, I did it on Twitch before, but during the COVID season for the Raptors 905, I'm a former Raptors 905 season ticket member for a number of years. And then when COVID happened, that stopped. And now we have a, a child, so it doesn't make sense. But I streamed and streamed the games. I did like a live reaction to the Raptors 905. Is that something of interest? Obviously doing like Toronto Raptors or anything else is difficult because they play so often, whereas 905, it was kind of like one or two days a week. It was a fun place to just kind of hang out, shoot the shit, and discuss the Raptors 905. So those are different things that I'm sort of thinking about. I also want to open up the platform to anybody else. If there's anybody out there that wants to do anything that is video related, that is written related, I have a small platform, but a platform that if you want to, you know, say, hey, I got picks that I like to talk about, or if I want to film this and send it in, hey, man, I'm not opposed to any of that stuff. What I want to do is grow this channel. I want to grow this free idea that sports betting does not need to be behind a paywall, does not need to be, you know, something that you pay for someone to give you minus 150 money line bets, right? Like, that's just, that to me is not what it should be about. I want you to win these bets, and I think the stuff on the outside is where, you know, me making 50 bucks a month on selling picks doesn't really seem to make a whole lot of sense, right? Merch is, is another option. Anyway, things to think about. Only two bets today because it's an, there's a busy card coming up this week. Um, lots of big stuff going on. Only two bets today. We're going to start with the Los Angeles Angels and the Texas Rangers. This line is at nine for the game, but both of these teams have sort of a subpar bullpen. When you look at the bullpen, 
The Angels have an ER team ERA of almost five, and the Rangers bullpen has an ERA of four and a half. Don't love that. And the first five line is set at most books at four and a half. This is why you want to line shop on applications like Betstamp. Find the number that makes the most sense. You know if you watch these videos or you listen to these podcasts, I like square numbers where there is push potential. BetMGM has this game at five for the first five innings. It's a little bit juicy at minus 125, but I like it. On the season... Uh, the LA Angels are 56 and 56 to the over and the under. Rangers are slightly skewed 56 and 53 to the over. But when you look at the starting matchups, so first of all, head to head over the last 10 games, these teams are 5, 3, and 2 to the over. Fair enough. The Angels in their last 10 games are 5, 4, and 1 to the over, but the Rangers are 8 and 2 to the under. Okay. Then, of course, when you look at the starters, you've got Patrick Sandoval going for the Angels. He's been very good. Over his last five starts, he's only two and three because the bullpen's blown it, but he's got an ERA of 1.2. He gave up, he hasn't given up more than two earned runs in his last five starts. He gave up two to the Giants, two to the Braves, zero to the Tigers, one to the Yankees, and one to the Padres. Now, the Angels lost three of those games. They lost 8 3 to San Francisco, 5 1 to Atlanta and 5-3 to San Diego. They just don't score many runs, which is good, because on the flip side, we've got Max Scherzer, who is in his third start for the Texas Rangers. His first time out against the White Sox, he went six innings, gave up three. His most recent time out, he went seven innings against the Oakland Athletics, giving up one. Now, when you look back to his starts with the Mets, he went seven innings, gave up one against Washington. He had a bad start against Boston, where he went six innings, gave up five. But previous to that, against the Dodgers, he went seven innings and only gave up or give up zero. So Scherzer has been Max Scherzer that we all know. Um, and the way that the Angels anemic offense has been playing lately, like when you look at the Angels recent games, they've scored two, three, three, four, seven, three, two, two, right? Like they're just not scoring a lot of runs. The same can sort of be said for the Texas Rangers. They've scored two, they scored nine, but then two, zero, you know, so Patrick Sandoval has been very, very good. Um, three, two gets us a push. Totally fine with the push there. But I think between Scherzer and Sandoval, it should be a lower scoring game. So it's going to be under five in the first five innings for minus 125. That's at BetMGM. And then the only other bet today, we've got the Baltimore Orioles plus 124 on the money line here at the Padres. Yeah, I'm going to take the Baltimore Orioles here. Baltimore is 73 and 45 this season. They are first in the East, the AL East. Then you've got the San Diego Padres, who are 56 and 62. So the Baltimore Orioles are 18 games better in the standings. Yeah, I know they're on the road, but plus 124 straight up on the money line. Head to head, Baltimore is 6 and 4 over the last 10 games. Most recently, though, they haven't played since 2019, so we can throw those stats out the window. Over their last 10 games, the Baltimore Orioles are 7 and 3. They just won 2 of 3 against the Seattle Mariners. Previous to that, they lost 2 of 3 to the Houston Astros. Previous to that, they swept the Mets. You look at San Diego, they just lost two of three to Arizona, including a 3-0 loss and a 5-4 loss. They lost two both games of a two-game set against Seattle, 6-1 and 2-0. And then previous to last, they lost three of four to the Los Angeles Dodgers. They are in a bad slide. Baltimore is coming into town, you know, arguably one of the better teams in all of baseball. You've got Grayson Rodriguez on the hill. He's two and three in his last five, but an ERA of only 2.2 when he's going six innings. So last time out against Houston, they lost that game, but he went six innings and only gave up two. That wasn't his fault. Before that, they lost to the Toronto Blue Jays, but he went six innings and gave up three. Previous to that, he went six and a third innings. He shut out the Yankees. He beat the Tampa Bay Rays. He went five and two thirds and gave up two. So Grayson Rodriguez has been pitching really, really well. On the flip side, you do have you Darvish, who, you know, no, not going to say he's played poorly at all. Last time out was a six inning shutout against the Seattle Mariners. The Padres lost that game six to one. So he's had some bad luck. But I just think the way that the Padres are trending versus the way the Orioles are trending and you're getting plus 24. That's kind of really the deciding factor. If this was, you know, minus 110 for the Baltimore Orioles, I probably don't make this bet. But you're getting the best team in the best division in baseball at plus money. 
you know, with Grayson Rodriguez on the hill, I'm going to take that there. So just the two best for the day. Give me the Angels and the Rangers to go under five in the first five innings. That's minus 125 at BetMGM. Give me the Baltimore Orioles on the money line, plus 124 at DraftKings. As always, drop a comment if you're fading or following. You can follow me across all my social media channels at Tyler Conium. Um, and your audio is on Spotify and on Apple. Let's kick this week off well. Happy Monday, and let's talk sports.